most unusual uh, founder in the technology world. Uh, I am not an engineer, but I'm actually a guy who holds a degree in philosophy. Yeah, it's funny because uh, it doesn't make sense, but uh, that's what kind of got me to a stage of thinking, how can somebody who's not as smart as some of the other people that are, exist in the field can create wealth versus the guys who are smarter than somebody of that level not able to create wealth. And that's where the philosophy kicked in and for me to go and probe further. So what I did, uh, that we, we sold our company close to half a billion dollars last year. And, and since then, I have been traveling to different startup ecosystems to understand what it means to create wealth and also, by the same rule, what does it mean, mean to erode wealth, right, behind your startup idea. And that's where I have come up with this theory. Uh, obviously, it's very early stages, but I'm presenting it for the first time. Hopefully, you guys will like it. It's wealth creation and erosion through startups. Before we jump onto the theory, I have a question for all of you. Any goods or services that were more efficient 10 years ago? Anything that was more efficient 10 years ago? Traffic is a state, but vehicles were not more efficient, correct? Is a state, it is a combination of being more vehicles, uh, fuel efficient cars, more safer cars, and so on and so forth. Uh, you, you'll find it very hard to find these things, right? But if, imagine if you were, let's say, a, a lion, or a deer, or a rabbit, this question will not apply to you. It's kind of the same. You have to wait for evolution to kick in for something to become more efficient. Let's say you do for more stronger ears or efficient legs and so on and so forth. Humanity is the only one which is hacking evolution and becoming more efficient where we have a law, the kind of law, which is basically saying that all the efficient stuff exists in the future and all the inefficient stuff exists in the past, right? If you think about this for a second and you'll understand that this is true for us and we are moving really fast. Right? Uh, look at the amount of technology innovation that have happened in the last thousand years, right? And the speed of it now with the platforms being created for some of these things. We have identified methods to keep making things more efficient. Now, we talk about every hurdle that is preventing us from being efficient is a pot of gold. Let that sink in for a second and, and think about it. If somebody wants to be more efficient at anything and it is kind of not there right now, it is a pot of gold, right? For example, I want to earn more money, somebody will create a great degree, which will help you unlock that pot of gold, and therefore that business will become pot of gold. Let's say somebody wants to figure out a way to make people see better versus having these spectacles, and they'll invent that and create an innovation and move there, right? If you think about every single thing, if it's made efficient and somebody who makes that efficient claims that pot of gold. Now, how do you know if your idea is going to create wealth or remove that hurdle or not? And that's where we'll think about this mechanism called as efficiency scoring. Now, before we jump into that, let's just understand that every idea can be thought from an old state versus new state. And we'll take some examples over here, but I want you to also think about examples beyond that in your mind that you've come across. First question, how many of you have booked a railway ticket in India? Please raise your hand. Okay. How many of you have uh, experienced both the formats, offline, and how many of you have used online? Okay, great. A question for you, if you have to give a score of efficiency out of 10 for the old behavior, that is going to the railway station, standing in the queue or whatever that is, versus going to IRCTC. What is the score you will give out of 10 for the first behavior and the second behavior, state A and state B? Three and eight. Three and eight. What I have noticed is kind of between that for most people, two and eight, right? You will see that the efficiency is dramatically different between the old behavior and the new behavior. And therefore, we have this theory which is called delta four. Whenever the delta of efficiency is greater than four, that's where you will unlock the pot of gold. Now, what, what is the beauty about uh, delta force? You will find that they are irreversible. UBP versus USP. All of us know about USP, but the real thing for today's world is UBP, and I'll explain that in a bit. UBP stands for Unique Bragworthy Proposition. 
everybody who will experience a new efficient state will scream at everybody at an inefficient state and tell them to move there. I'll give you a small example. How many of you have used true color in India? Please raise your hand. Okay. How many of you discovered true color because of an advertisement? Nobody. I'll tell you how you all discovered it. Somebody came to you and told you, give me any phone number and I'll tell you the name of the person. And they did a magic trick. And that's how you discovered true color and everybody downloaded it. Right? That is unique, brag-worthy proposition. Everybody who moves to an efficient state will scream at everybody at an efficient state and say, hey, move here. You're wasting your time in that inefficient state. Don't go to the railway station to book a ticket. You just move into this. Or don't book the cab in the old way. Book it through Uber or Ola. Right? We will scream at the inefficient state and move the humanity forward. But that is only true if the delta is large enough. Right? And we have high tolerance for delta force. If there is a bad experience with IRCTC, we will continue to use it because there is nothing more efficient than that. The Delta 4 exists in that product. The Delta 4 exists in Uber and Ola. We'll crib. Why doesn't the driver know how to use maps? Go back to the old behavior and book the other methods. You will not move there because the Delta is large enough compared to the previous behavior, right? So what you will notice is that any product or service that offers Delta 4 creates wealth. Now, with the same rule, we'll understand what is not creating wealth for a second. Let's just take one more example before we go there. Buying shirts offline, buying shirts online. Anybody wants to give an efficiency score for that? Please raise your hand and give a score. 10 and 0. Okay, 10 and 0. Anybody else? Online is uh, 6 and online is 4. So you'll observe that there are different answers to this. Sometimes you will see the delta is great, not great, even minus in some cases. Right? Every time you come across something that has lower than delta 4, right, it results in it being a reversible behavior. One bad experience in buying shirts online, you will say, this is absolutely useless. Nobody, no, I'm not going to buy this again. There is nothing that you brag about. You will not find people screaming about it and telling other people, hey, try this particular new format of trying new things, right? And you'll have very, very low tolerance for that, right? And that is the beauty of this. You will also observe sometimes that the Delta IV behavior is not just a function of efficiency, but also affordability. Sometimes the Delta IV, let's say flights are more efficient than trains, but nobody is moving to flights as much because they cannot afford it. But what if they can afford it? They will not use the trains anymore, right? Therefore, it is important to understand the affordability angle also over here. So going back over here, whenever the delta is less than four, right, you will observe that it does not really create wealth or stay there. It sometimes even uh, retains the wealth. Sometimes what happens, however, is that people pour in more money to increase the delta. Right? For example, I will start offering 30% discount on shirts to increase the delta artificially. The natural product does not have the delta, so I put more money to just artificially increase the delta, and therefore, you will see it will actually erode wealth. A lot of times, in fact, 99% of times, I have seen entrepreneurs pick ideas that do not even have delta 1. Right? And I'll tell you why they do that. They pick the ideas from the West and China and try to copy it over here. Here's the problem to that. Let's just imagine for a second. I have less time. I need to get my clothes washed. Western option. Let's create a laundry startup. I'll tell you what is the more efficient solution in India, which all of you are already doing. Get a domestic maid. That is the more efficient solution than versus using a laundry startup, but guess what? Close to five, six startups got funded millions of dollars for running laundry startups, which was not a Delta IV behavior for consumers. And that's the beauty about humanity. We know what is Delta IV for us, right? We don't need to worry about and understand and think that, mm, let me act, be cool and order stuff through this laundry app. No, you will not do that, right? And that is the beauty about this particular model. Also, what I have noticed is that when somebody discovers a Delta II, Delta III, everybody launches the exact same startup, right? There'll be eight, nine clones of the exact same model. 
That is the problem. When there is a pot of gold, it's of a certain size. When 10 people come for that pot of gold, the pot of gold disappears because the amount of money deployed to capture that pot of gold is more sometimes than the actual money available over here. A lot of times we make that mistake one more time is that when we look at the previous slide over here, investors invest in companies when they see Delta 4 in the first 500,000 customers. They feel there is a Delta 4. This is great investment, let's go bet on it. Then they move on beyond million customers, the Delta 4 is not felt. And that's where you will see a challenge that uh, sometimes there are false signals that people invest on these companies because they look at limited data so far, but they don't cut it by different segments of users. So coming to the thing, whenever you see that people actually put more money behind Delta Force, uh, uh, less than Delta Force, this is exactly what happens. Uh, we, we will erode wealth. And, and I, I request all the guys who are seeing this online, or some of you guys who are going to do a startup, do not do something that is just a Delta One. The humanity will not brag about it. Uh, make something bragworthy. Thank you.